Hello, hello, and good morning, guys, girls. And today we're going to play, or you're going to watch me play, Tiger Road, made and developed by Capcom, published by Rhymestar. This is a 2D side scrolling platform game created and released back in 1987. It was developed by yours truly, Tokuro Fujiwara. And if you don't know who that guy is, he is the guy that gave you Ghosts and Goblins, Commando, Bionic Commando, and Sweet Home from Nintendo. He has published a lot of great games in the, in the past and present which makes this man a asset icon to Capcom. So, without further ado, what makes this game good, Tiger Road? Well, Tiger Road consists in the same bit of gameplay similar to the Ghouls and Ghosts games, and Ghosts and Goblin games. So, only thing about this is that it's limited with health, and that gives you a thrive to succeed progressing through the stages. So, Without further ado, let us begin the game and the video. Alright, so, in this game, you start off with a group of Shaolins getting their booty beat, getting the booty works, by this dragon clan, and they end up taking all the children in this temple. They've been kidnapped, and it is your goal to save the children trapped inside the temple. You play as one of the greatest assets, um, students, who is in a master of the style that they have learned called Olin, which is a tiger technique style. So in this game, you have different sets and paths. I chose the longer path, so we can make the video a little longer. So to start off, the game is amazing. It's quick snap, it's fast, it's effective. Enemies come at you at a nice steady pace rate, just like a ghoul and ghost game which is amazing. You have different roads how you can take, huh, clever, different roads how you can take the stage going up or down, mostly most of the time. And that's what makes this game very really good. But keep in note, this game is also extremely hard too. Very, very, very hard. Just like a ghoul thing ghost game. So you have to know your surroundings and your range system while playing this game. Because preferably me, I couldn't take it. I was dying through each stage back to back. And don't even get me started with going up these stairs. The stairs, man. You don't know whether you're up going or not. It's insane. You don't know which path to take. They do give you implements of up and down, but those can take you to different directions. So with that being said, you don't know where you're going. Going up the stairs and going down the stairs and going up the stairs and going down the stairs and going up the sideways stairs. It's in this first stage, which is really highly annoying. You don't know what you're doing. So we fight our first boss, which looks smelly and stinky. Wash your nasty and he likes climbing up the walls and areas. Really simple boss if you know what you're doing. You know, it's not really a complex boss. Once you get his strategy down, everything else come into play. Similar to a Mega Man game or Rockman. So after that's all said and done, after he was beaten, we progressed through all what well, majority of most of the stages. And the stages do get harder and harder by every time you refer. Stages where you're actually flying above the air when he possesses a flying cloak or coat going around. And I can't tell you how many times I fell to my doom getting eaten by these freaking alligators. <laughs> Most of these lovely stages, and the stages in this game is pretty beautiful, dude. What about? Ah, I love the Chinese authenticity in this game. It is beautiful. Good job. Good job, Capcom. Good job. And yes, like I said, there are countless of traps and platforms. If you don't know what you're doing, you will fall to your death on a lot of them. And I mean a lot of them. Bamboo spikes. Time of my life. Whatever. So, then we fight a big guy, really huge, like somebody from Fist of the North Star. Yeah, really, really huge guy. 
So after we got done progressing through him and beating, this, beating that stage, we progressed through other unique stages. But before we do, we have Tassus. And these Tassus is great because when doing all of these areas, which I failed a few sadly, but when doing them, you get an improvement of the character, such as Vado and your health. I mean, Vidality and your health increases, strength increases, and you also get a special technique, which I'm not going to spoil until much later in the video. So yeah, as you can see, I failed a few of them. But let's keep going. So in this next stage, we go into a hunted area, which is a hunted temple that's been forsaken for many, many years. So we go in here, stage, hard, difficult, believe it. It's insane. But I do like, which makes this really, really funny, after I'm hitting all these snakes, I like how the, the Charlene huddles up the steps with no question. It is hilarious and funny. And we get to the next stage where we have these vertebrate zombie Chinese uh, monsters. And these things weren't the issue. The issue when playing some of these stages, and especially this one, is the skeleton head. Not only is his hitbox and data frame is ridiculous when you get sucked into this, to its mouth. <sighs> it's insane. But I digress. Let's keep going further. So as we get further, some some of the hard stuff like the sucking skeleton, sucking us into his mouth and eating us, and leaving us like the rest of the remains of all of the skeletons within the stage. Boy, now we see where all the fatal people died and carry their fate. Jeez, sucks to be them. Get it? Sucks to be them. <laughs> Anywho. So then we get through this other stair area where we have like these golden statues and we progress through them really easily until we fight another statue of the sort throwing um, throwing weapons at us and then stabbing us with spear. Whatever. So yeah, it does give us a good run until we find out that it has a companion. A trap thingy that shoots out flames if you don't pay attention to it. So what I do personally, I button mash. A lot because I died by this thing a lot so I button mashed it and during my button mash I encounter lots and lots of vampire bats those aren't big birds sweetheart they're giant vampire bats on to you accurately but that's not the part that gets you the part that really gets you is that they snag and grab a hold on to you it's hard for, for you to jerk off and get out of the grab you get your hands off me they get and it's, it's just over it's over and the fatality is when they all like gang up and eat you and stuff after you die oh man such uh vicious so anyway we're able to get through that and then we were able to pass through an area where they throw flaming fireballs spiders which were highly annoying in this area but hey, man, what game don't have hard spiders? You guys know, I don't have to explain. All right, now, after all of that, going through all this undead area, this undead temple, we were able to get through this hard area by cracking down this gym that had the skeleton key in it, like an Indiana Jones movie. Like, we are going to die. I would progress through and meet this undead type voodoo like shaman. So we fight it, instantly killed me. Gave me the raisin demon like Akuma. Wow, now we see where it Mother came from. Or maybe not, that's just me talking. So yeah, I kind of found out its ability. I just waited for him to come to me or me come to him and I just hit him and it stops him from not trying to grab me. So after I was able to defeat this undead Chinese shaman, we were into our second training. Second training was much easier than the first one, because all I had to do was stay in, my, stay in my lane, stay in the center, and just whack every last student that was in my path. And I like playing stages like this because they're a lot simpler. You can just know when to hit and when to strike and know just the mathematics, how many are coming at you with the hit first, so the three coming at me at first, I hit them there and then hit the other. So this was an easy breeze for me to just go through. So after I surpassed knocking out all of my fellow Charlene students, well, students, I mean, uh, yeah, whatever. 
we were able to go to the master and learn a ability to increase our fidelity. And then now we're in the next stage where we frighten like a group of wolves looking like Yamcha from Dragon Ball. I'm like, okay, interesting. <laughs> Yamchas? All right, fair enough. So we progressed through fighting all the Yamchas or all the wild wolves. We get into a cave area where there's a lot of snakes and we uh, do get annihilated at the first try. And then we we're able to progress through it on the second try. And we were able to get through and then we get on top of a, a cliff area where there's a lot of ninjas. I'm like, ninjas in China? Could be. I don't know. I have to look up some history. But yeah, so we're, we progressed to get through all of these floating ninjas, throwing ninja stars at us and etc. And then we were able to get into the next stage where there's a guy who looks like Raddus from Dragon Ball Z. What is going on with all these people looking like Dragon Ball characters? <laughs> so he throws his bird at us, of course. That's his strategy. After I found out how to beat him, I just ducked most of his moves and I just spammed away my attack button and we were able to progress through beating him to the next stage. Then we were able to see a annoying area loaded with just mud and it was dumb because of the fact that uh, this tests out what to hit, when to hit it, when to move real fast when clearing out and making sure that you don't hit that mud a lot because slowing down can respond them a lot faster which is ridiculous and you don't want to be getting just clobbered from behind knowing that you're trying to work the front and that happens a lot in my gameplay and man i was furious i almost lost my mind to a point i just wanted to just throw my arcade stick around but they're not got it together I was able to get through this nonsense eventually through all my deaths and dying in this area. I just had kept a cool head and I was able to get through. And as I got through, we got into another area where there's nothing but birds and big giant guys knocking me to my doom to a big oh! Oh my god! Like what, man? The oh. But I was able to get through because then I started putting my knowledge together and saying, hey, once you just jump up the stage and stop worrying about killing everything and just go through it. Think of it as a, as a speed run. And that's exactly what I did. I didn't care about these guys. I kept it trucking. I moved it. I went down and kept going down and they knew it. So they started trying to throw stuff at me. I said, mm, 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 mm. Then we were able to go back to Yamcha again, fighting his group of Yamcha clones. We were able to get through them. And as I got through, I can notice the stage was keeping me on my toes because they were just throwing spears right above my head telling me to keep moving. So as I got moving, this was when I met this guy. And this guy wasn't too hard of a fight. He was just a bit of annoying once you got his strategy. Think of it as like a Mega Man battle with, with him fighting a lot of the uh, you know, enemies. And basically all he does is throw countless of knives at you. That does a good chunk of damage, three points of damage of your health. So that just gives you the warning to say, dodge those knives, because you don't want to be getting hit by them. So with him, it was all about waiting for him to come to you, jump out of his way, or just follow through, or you can get aggressive, which is aggressive play like in Mega Man, it's when you rush like blasters. So with him, I was aggressively getting aggressive with him because I knew that was the only way how I could sure win. But I'm gonna tell you something. This is a fun fact. Since we know that it was Mr. Tokuro Fujiwara that made that made this game, it lets you know where Arthur got his throwing ability from because this guy was accurate as heck, man, with these knives. It was so clean, so precise. I'm like, dude, now I see where Arthur got his throwing abilities from. This is ridiculous. So we were able to beat uh, uh, Arthur's counterpart and we were able to get to the next stage. So in this next stage, it was pretty interesting. Um, I actually liked it. You know, you trying to learn your third ability, which I failed again learning because I jumped too early and not too late and I failed. And I'm mad because now I don't know what I was going to get. But anyway, back to the game. 
respect to trying to um, get through this area. And this area is pretty interesting. Nice looking area too. I actually like the details in this area. You know, for it to be a classic game. I actually like the final boss's area. This is really, really cool. The only point that I didn't like, I didn't like that enemies can go through Bob walls. I mean, barb walls. And then I didn't, especially I didn't like that enemies can get close and just grab you. I'm like, man, if you don't get off of me, you get your hands off me. Through Bob barb walls. And going up these stairs was, going down these stairs was getting ridiculous because you can get hit in the process. I'm just like, okay. So they're treating this like Castlevania. Fair enough. So I just timed my way going down the stairs and etc. by stair and stair. And I was able to progress through. And we got to this other area where these guys will inflate and, and implode, get big like a balloon. And uh, it was pretty inter in interesting characters. So we was able to get through those guys. And then we were able to get back into our uh, flying status with our floating coat. And um, we were able to encounter guys with freaking, you know, arrows hitting us while we're trying to go up our path. And this is why I like, like I said, Mr. Fujiwara's games because he makes games so challenging that it really does keep you on your toes and the penalty is very, very serious. Even when fighting bosses. I like when you, when you fight a boss in his game to where if you fail and fall, it knocks you all the way back down. You die to your death, but when you do die, you gotta start all the way freaking back from where you were floating in the air with your floating coat and go right back up to fight him. So that made that more careful for you to take decent steps and be super patient with his stages. And this is why I like Mr. Fujiwara's game because it is amazing. So we were able to go through that again and again and then and we were able to defeat this boss by simply mashing our buttons and getting them. And then we were able to get to the next stage, jumping off bar rice barrels and stuff like that, which we succeeded doing. After that, we encountered our other boss, a priest that liked throwing metal steel balls. Comments below, take that negative, I mean, take that positive, because no pause, because that's exactly what he's throwing, throwing steel weapons. I'm gonna leave it at that. So, whatever. So he throws these metal objects at us and it does mad, mad damage. So the key is, is just to stand back and when he gets into that state where he's like he's about to go for his Olympic throwing stance, watch out for that because he does dumb damage and it can knock you all the way to the wall. No joke. He hit me hard with that dude. And that's when I had to know, watch out for those steel objects. So after I beat him, well, after we actually, sorry, we kind of double KO'd oh, each other, oh which God. I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, man, that, that was hilarious. So they just spawned us to the next area where we're going to be fighting these night robotic knights that has, like, magnetic energy, like, uh, m um, Morningstar, like, frail weapons. So we were able to surpass and go through them and we're fighting, yes, the floating shaman Chinese monk again. And dude, he was way more aggressive than he was the first time. And I'm gonna tell you, I was super angry. I was at a point of rage because he his, his hitbox was so close Sometimes so far that he was still able to get me with that grab so many times. In fact, here's a montage of me getting killed a lot of times by this stupid grab. Bruh. 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 Bruh.
Bruh. Bruh. Bruh. Bruh. Bruh. Your soul is mine. It was ridiculous. I was, dude, I was so annoyed to a point. The good part still surpassed, but the bad part was telling me, break your computer. You know you want to. Break it, the rain. You will never beat this boss. <laughs> and I was just like, all that was going through my head. And I was just like, you will not get the better of me, demon. So, I beat him. I beat him beautifully with flying colors. I succeeded. And I did it with being very, very tenacious. Now, that being said, next area, right? Like, yeah, we beat him. After we get done beating them, and I feel happy about beating them, right? So we get through the door. Let I mind you, your character moves auto because it is a scene play of him walking. So I'm not moving this character. And as I move, dude, you know what happens? Yeah, he falls to his death. Why would you put that in the game? Why? Knowing that I couldn't move. I was like... Was that intentional? Yeah. Mr. Fujiwara is known for making his games be the Dark Souls of its time. Guaranteed. For sure. Because some of his stuff is so fast paced with such high movement that you can make mistakes and die a lot of the time. Even by the alligators. Again. So, with that being said, we were able to get through, and sure enough now, we fight these two twins, and they were a breath of fresh air. I enjoy fighting this uh, boss. This was a great idea, because fighting this boss, you have to know to hit which side. So whichever side was open is what you hit. Whatever side that was closed was on defense, so you couldn't lower that health. So you had to fight the ones whose defense was down. You know, I thought it was pretty a creative idea for, for making an enemy like that. It's crazy nowadays that it, enemies are not made like that, like they used to, like, like, well, like this. I just like the any, mini, miny, mo, which one to hit type idea. That's, that's pretty awesome, man. And I like that this boss was like this. Out of all bosses that I played in this hard game, I enjoyed fighting and defeating this boss. This boss gets a solid 10 out of 10 of creativity and idea plot based on this character or characters amazing so after we get done defeating the twins the master gives us our last and final test we have to try to hit and blow this fire out of this candle and we only have a few seconds left to do it i was able to succeed to do it and with doing it i was granted the secret power technique of olin of the tiger technique which is great because it also increases my energy and as much as my strength, which is a really cool scroll to learn. But would that be helpful? Pfft, not fighting these two big giant things. These guys took turns on me and wait. Pause. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I wanted to quit. I swear to God, dude. I wanted to quit so bad. <laughs> I, I was, I was furious. Like I, I, I couldn't figure out how to stop them. Cause even though I had a powerful new weapon, they could just cold cock me with a punch, stun me, knock me down, fly on me all the way to the stage of this area, left and right, back and forth. And that's not the part that really got on my nerves. Not only was they punching so they had a belly flop from heck that took massive damage. Instant KO, instant death. 
I died from that so many times, dude. I was ready to just give up. Oh, you going all crazy ad on me. I'll show you some crazy ad. Look at this. Come on. Let's this is the true point of the game where this is where you lose your force. And lots of them. I I almost abandoned hope. I needed I needed God for this. I needed God and a bowl of grits. Yeah, I said it. Grits. Grits gives me strength. Gives me hope. Gives me belief. And when I saw that, I knew right then and there I was on my way to kick some butt. My heart was on fire. All right. Okay. God, I hate this freaking bosses, dude. Night. What? Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude. Oh my god, bro. I hate this. I hate this boss. So, all right, you heard me rambling live in game. So, after all of that, I was able to go ahead and go through and uh, finally beat them. And what I did was I kind of like allowed myself to lose a lot of the fights that I was doing to find the right motion where they would kind of like be separate. And then I just start spamming the tiger, Olin tiger technique and just start giving it to him, giving it to him, giving it to him, giving it to him. You know? And. I found out that was the key of beating these guys. So that's what I did. I spaced them out, got them one by one, and I was and I was able to defeat them one by one. I was so happy, dude. This was a fulfillment, and I was happy. I said, "Yes, now we can get to this final boss." So here we are now. Next stage. We're going up the stairs. Yes, going up the stairs. So here we are now, the final boss. We meet Ryu. I know, right? Ryu. We say it for short. So we f we fight him. And I actually like his fighting style. It's pretty interesting. You know, he dashes like a Street Fighter character. You know, he has an interesting Street Fighter one kick. You know, he throws like this dragon head, like one hand fireball like technique that he keeps throwing that does massive damage. What causes me to just stand in one spot. And you know what's funny? He tracked on my hitbox thinking that I was there. So all I did was crouch and start breaking those knees and make him start break dancing. I made him break down to his knees. So after we got done making him do the break dance jiggle, we were able to save all the children from the school. They were no longer in danger anymore. Thanks to our Charlin Monk, the master of Olin Tiger Technique. Happiness was restored. When Lee Wong lead, oh, so his name is Lee Wong. So now we know the hero's name is Lee Wong. Lee Wong from Ryu Gadao. Interesting name, Ryu Gadao. Peace and prosperity reigns once again. So the review, this game was fun. But it's extremely hard. You have to be extremely, extremely patient with a lot of these enemies. Knowing when to hit, knowing when to jump, knowing these stages and his traps and all the other type of stuff, you will lead into great victory. But if not, you are going to rage. You are going to break. You are going to throw joysticks like a boomerang or like a frisbee across the room. And it's going to happen just because I know how hard this game was. This game made me sweat on my arcade pad, literally. So with that being said, do I recommend Tiger Road for anybody? Absolutely, if you wanna rage and have your friends laugh at you during gameplay. Guys, thank you for this review. This game was fun, I enjoyed it. That's the end of the video. Hey, we are at the end of the video. You made it this far, that means you are awesome. Don't forget to click that like button. 
and most importantly don't forget to arcade tap that subscribe button you all have a great day